It's hard to do that with one hand. But COVID-19 has forced us to learn a lot of new things, hasn't it? It's speaking of that, this morning uh, I was greeted by uh, a paper in my mailbox here at the church from our insurance company. And so it give, it's giving us some more instructions on how to reopen as we move uh, from phase one to phase two and to phase three and beyond. And so in that spirit, I greet you this beautiful morning. It is a balmy, steamy morning here in Mount Airy, North Carolina. And we're coming to you live from Central United Methodist Church. Welcome. Uh, we hope that you are uh, having a restful and reflective Memorial Day weekend. Uh, but we are still celebrating our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. And today, uh, we will celebrate the ascension of Jesus Christ when he uh, rose up in the clouds and uh, went into heaven. And we are so glad that our risen Savior is there at the right hand of God the Father. And he is intervening for us, praying for us, pulling for us, and he's ready to welcome us. So let's uh, look at what's going on. We started our spare change ministry way back, way back before the stay-at-home orders uh, went into effect at the beginning of Lent. Uh, the season of Lent, and some of your cups may be running over, and if they are, we give thanks to God. Praise the Lord. If you need another cup to fill another cup before we have our no noisy offering, sometime in the future when we come back together for live worship here in the sanctuary, we are going to make these cups available to you. They'll be here at the church on the church campus, and some will be in the narthex, some will be in the um, uh, upper foyer, and you can come and pick up another spa spare change cup, fill it up, and we'll have a big time noisy offering. Everything, all this change that we're collecting will go to help fight hunger here in this community. So please remember our noisy offering and our spare change ministry. Um, I believe that's all the announcements I have can think of any others? All right. Well, uh, this is Memorial Day weekend, and we do hope that you take some time uh, to reflect uh, upon what that means for us here in uh, the United States and for all those other soldiers from countries all over the world that have given their lives in defense of their loved ones and their homes. Uh, in that spirit, let's pause uh, for a prayer to mark this Memorial Day uh, coming up tomorrow. And as I pause, uh, you can either say it out loud or say it in your heart. We give you thanks, O oh God. Let us pray. Let us give thanks to God for the land of our birth, with all its chartered liberties, for all the wonder of our country's story. We give you thanks, O oh God for leaders in nation and state, and for those who in days past and in these present times have labored for the commonwealth, we give you thanks, O God. For those who in all times and places have been true and brave in the world's common ways, and in the world's common ways have lived upright lives and ministered to their fellows, we give you thanks, O God. For those who served their country in its hour of need, and especially for those who gave even their lives in that service, we give you thanks, O God. Almighty God and most merciful Father, as we remember these, your servants, remembering with gratitude their courage and strength, we hold before you those who mourn for them. Look upon your bereaved servants with your mercy as this day brings them memories of those they have lost a while. May it also bring your consolation and the assurance that their loved ones are alive now and forever in your living presence. Let's take just a couple moments of silence to lift these men and women and their families up in our hearts.
come in. Since then we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast our confession. Let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Risen with Christ, let us seek the realities of the Spirit. Our life is hidden with, with Christ, Christ in God. God. He who descended is also ascended far above the heavens, that he might fill all things. When Christ, our life, appears, we shall appear with him in glory. Alleluia. Our opening hymn this morning is Hail the Day That Sees Him Rise.
Today's epistle lesson is from the letter to the Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 15 through 23. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, and for this reason I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, <clears throat> not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is the body, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. If you will join me now, our Psalter reading today comes from Psalm 47. Clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout, Shout to, to God, God with loud, loud songs, songs of joy. joy. For the Lord, the Most High, is awesome, a great Great king, king over all the earth. earth. He subdued peoples under us and nations under our feet. He, he chose, chose our, our heritage, heritage for us, the pride God of Jacob, Jacob whom he loves. loves. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth, sing praises with a psalm. God is King over the nations, God sits on his holy throne. The princes of the peoples gather as the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to God, he, he is, is highly, highly exalted. exalted. And now our gospel lesson today comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 44 through 53. Then he said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple, blessing God. Brothers and sisters, this is the word of God for us, the children of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now let us join together in affirming our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, 
was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now let us sing Jesus Loves the Little Children, which is found printed in your bulletin as we prepare for our children's time. Well, good morning. How is everyone doing today? I hope y'all are doing good. Um, and I hope you had a wonderful week. So I have a question. Now, many of you have um, probably been to your fair share of birthday parties, right? Yeah, or other types of celebrations slash parties. Did you get that invitation in the mail? Or maybe it was handed to, handed to you. You open it up, you see who it's for, you see the theme, where it will be, you get all excited, you're ready to jump in the car and head straight there to celebrate, right? You get so excited. You start to think of all that will happen at the party. What will it look like? Hmm. What will you get to do once you get there? What will you get to see and experience? Just imagine all that you'll be able to do once you get there. Now, what are some of your favorite things and what are some of the things that you're thinking about at this party? Hmm. Did you say birthday cake? Did anybody say birthday cake? Yes. Yes. All right, with chocolate or vanilla? Mm. Both. both. Oh, I've got both back here. <laughs> Maybe there's sprinkles on it. Eh, no, no sprinkles. We're kind of iffy on the sprinkles. What about tons of icing? Maybe. Maybe there's pizza at this party or something else really good to eat. Maybe there's ice cream. I'm good with that. Maybe there'll be some games that you can play. Hmm. or something you can do together, maybe like a little activity. Maybe there's a cool banner that announces the type of birthday or the party that's happening. Or maybe there's streamers everywhere. That's fun. Maybe there'll be a theme at this bar birthday party or at this party. Maybe the theme's unicorns or dinosaurs. Hmm. Wow. Maybe your favorite part, and this is mine, is um, the excitement you see on the face of the person of whom the party is for. It brings joy to them to have all these special people gather together celebrating. Now, are you beginning to see this party? Yeah, maybe. Now, did I miss anything? Hmm. Yes, I did. Hold on just a second. Maybe they're, maybe they're color of the theme. Hmm. Or maybe they have some kind of message on it, like happy birthday or congratulations. Wow. Balloons are so much fun. Balloons have been around for decades. Did you know that? Balloons have been, the first modern day balloon um, was made in the year 1824. That's a long time ago. It's 196 years ago. That's a lot. The neat thing about balloons is that they can be filled with different things to make them do different things. So if I was just to blow up a balloon, you know, usually like the ones that you kind of don't do very much, they just kind of drop on the ground. And then there are some that you can fill up with helium like these that will kind of float in the air, right? So there's different kind of things that you can do with them. Now, balloons have been seen or used in other types of celebrations like special services for people that have been released for like in memory of a person that maybe has passed away or died. And or maybe they have been in celebration of someone special. 
And just recently, I saw where some schools and um, people had a balloon, re b balloon release, excuse me, um, for graduates, our graduation class. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Now, I will say, if you are going to do this, you need to make sure that it is safe for birds and airplanes because balloons can go really high. So you've got to make sure. But there's something about a balloon release when you let them go. I'm getting attacked here. When you let them go, um, that they go up, way up in the air and they just keep going up and up and up and it's really mesmerizing just to watch them. Now, hmm. if I was just to hold on to these balloons, they're not going to do very much, right? Sometimes you just got to let them go. Uh-oh. It's pretty tall, isn't it? Oh, I just keep going. Go. Wow. Hmm. It might be up there for a while. <laughs> wow. In the last few weeks, we have talked about and have gone over the events that have happened since Jesus' um, crucifixion, burial, and resurrection. And it has come to this point where Jesus is ready to return to heaven. Now, our lesson today comes from the book of Acts and the book of Luke, and where we hear how Jesus took his disciples aside to make sure that they knew what was going on and that they understood everything that happened to him. He explained to them the importance of his crucifixion and, the, um, that the, uh, and why he had to be raised from the dead to fulfill the scriptures and what the scripture has said. Now, as he had had discussed together last week, remember this, we, um, he said that he needed to return to his father so and, um, when he did this, that the Holy Spirit would, become, would come and be with them, right? Remember that part? Now, this week, I asked some of the kids at the child care center if they were given a balloon and they let it go, would they be sad? And you know what? They said yes. <laughs> now, the disciples were sad too at first. The disciples were sad that Jesus would, not be, uh, would be leaving them and not be with them. But the Bible tells us that Jesus opened their minds so that they would understand. And then this amazing thing happened. The Bible tells us that Jesus lifted his hands, blessed the disciples, and then was lifted up and taken to heaven. Wow. Think about what the disciples were doing. Do you think they were just standing around looking at each other puzzled? Nah, they probably would not. If it were me standing there, I would be looking up and watching as Jesus traveled up, 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 up to heaven. Watching as he traveled so far that he disappeared. Now, were the disciples sad as they watched him go? Nah. The Bible then tells us that Jesus, um, once Jesus had gone up to heaven, the disciples worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy praising God. The disciples did not want to let go of Jesus, but once they understood why it needed to happen, and when they did let go, their hearts and minds were open to all that Christ had said and all that God had done. Their sadness had been lifted and replaced with such joy. They went then and shared the good news of Jesus Christ to so many people and praised God in all that they did. And how wonderful is that? Now that is a celebration we can all be excited about, right? Let's have a prayer. Dear most gracious and heavenly Lord, we thank you for today. We thank you for this wonderful weather we're having. Lord, we also thank you for the rain that we had this week too. Um, Lord, we just ask that you continue to keep us safe um, as we go about our lives. And Lord, also just keep each, and, each of us safe as we're not gathered together. But Lord, we know that one day we will be together in your house to worship you. Lord, um, as we think about all of the things that Christ has done for us, that God has done for us, let us just get excited about the things that are going to come and the things that are in place for each and every single one of us. Lord, in your name we pray. Amen. I was hoping that Keisha would leave those balloons up on the ceiling, but uh, I'm really impressed, and um, 
I'm very proud of how you figured out the length of the, the ribbon to keep them from being lost for a while. That is really, really cool. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Oops. Well, they will come down. They, they will come down eventually. <laughs> so we might be thankful that uh, the helium doesn't last, but uh, we'll, we'll make sure it comes down. Some excitement during worship. And I can imagine um, how excited the disciples must have been to see that side of Jesus ascending into heaven. This week, we continue to give thanks for all the ways in which the body of this church and community have come together um, during these uncertain and difficult times um, for new challenges, but continued challenges as well. We continue to be thankful and grateful for those of you who volunteer your time in our community in so many different ways, whether it's mask ministry, whether it's finding out ways to take graduates, balloons, and um, to make sure that they are honored, um, going to see those who are shut in and figuring out unique ways to keep them safe, but also to keep them connected. We are so grateful for the kingdom not the kingdom, well, we're grateful for the kingdom, but we're thankful for the kingdom that you all promote in our community, on behalf of our church, and more importantly, on behalf of Jesus Christ. We remind you that our giving looks a little bit different right now, but our resources monetarily can be mailed to the church, or there is online giving if you go to our website you will see the Give Online or Contribute Online button there on our homepage. So we thank you, thank you for continuing to support Central United Methodist Church, our church and our surrounding community. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Majestic Lord, you unselfishly provide us with the sanctuary of your love. And Lord, in these times we've come to understand that the sanctuary is not just a place. It is not just a place with a steeple. It is you in our hearts. Lord, you continue to wisely calm our imagined fears while nurturing our dream-filled hopes. Grant us the ability to serve you faithfully. Joyfully, we honor you with our gifts, tithes, and offerings. Blessed be your name. Amen.
The Lord be with you and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Let us pray. O oh God, the King of glory, you have exalted your only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. This morning, as we lift up our praises and our concerns, we ask that you continue to lift up the family of Melva Houston, whom we lost last week, and her husband, especially Thaxton. We also would like to lift up Marilyn Driggers in our congregation and the family of Wren, who is the daughter of Anne and Conrad Martin. If you have prayer concerns that you would like to be lifted up, we ask that you either email or call Pastor Danny or me, or you may contact Gail Cox, and we will make sure that we get those um, lifted up verbally with your permission. Please just make sure that you give us permission. Let us go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, so much of the time, we glide along the surface of life. We've been used to getting up, eating breakfast, entering our workday, eating lunch, finishing our workday, maybe eating dinner, go to an evening event, or watch television, do some sort of craft, and then back to bed. Lord, this is our routine although it might look a little different for some people. There might be a snag here or there, but nothing a little adjustment can't handle. And so often we go through our week on autopilot. Weekends have their own routines, but if all goes well, and it often does, we fly through our Saturday and Sunday calm and cool. So much of the time, Lord, we are on that autopilot and life is a piece of cake. Lord, however, we know that there are those times when we are sometimes fiercely pushed off our smooth track and minor adjustments won't get us back on track. Troubled feelings erupt into our consciousness and we become irritable, angry, depressed, or sorrowful. We might try all the tricks we know to get back onto that autopilot, but none of them will succeed. In mounting desperation, we turn to family and friends, trying to reach a calmer, deeper self, but we don't fully succeed. Then at last we come to you, God. Something has gone wrong, and business as usual isn't going to put us back on our familiar ways. It is in these times that we discover how strong you are, how wise, and how caring. What appears to be chaos to us becomes an opportunity for you to enrich our lives, heal our wounds, and deepen our understanding of this thing called life. How grateful we are that we can come into your presence. Lord, it is a great joy that you are our God. And while our troubled times are never welcome and sometimes seem unending, we have learned that they are the occasions that often bring us closer to you. Then our gratitude has no limits. Lord, we pray these things in your name, you the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our next hymn this morning is Jesus Shall Reign.
Thank you. Now let's turn in the book of the Acts of the Apostles to chapter 1. This is a continuation of the story, the account of the ascension that you heard uh, Kanet uh, read from the Gospel of Luke. It continues here in the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 1. In the first book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus did and taught from the beginning until the day when he was taken up to heaven after giving, in, giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself alive to them by many convincing proofs, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While staying with them, he ordered them not to leave Jerusalem, but to wait there for the promise of the Father. This, he said, is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus who has been taken up from you into heaven will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. May God add his rich blessing upon the faithful reading, hearing, and doing of this, God's holy word. Amen. Luke tells us here in this second volume, in this introduction to the book of Acts, that after the resurrection, Jesus spent 40 days with his followers. Jesus spoke to them about the kingdom of God. Jesus ate meals with them, and he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And then on the 40th day, something curious happened. Jesus led his uh, disciples out of Jerusalem along the road to Jericho, up the Mount of Olives, and as far as Bethany. Now, if you were paying attention back during uh, Palm Sunday, this is the reverse of the route that Jesus used to come into Jerusalem on that Sunday before he was crucified. Remember how Jesus rode a donkey while the crowds waved palm branches in the air and spread their coats on the road and shouted, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Well, 40 days after he'd been resurrected from the dead, Jesus stood there on the Mount of Olives and a lot happened. Jesus gave his followers the great commission, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Jesus explained some more of the scriptures to them, and Jesus spoke further about the kingdom of God, and he gave them one last command, that they should remain in Jerusalem until they had been clothed with power from on high. And then Jesus ascended to heaven. But before Jesus ascended to heaven in the clouds and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, the disciples had one more question. Just one more thing, Jesus. Lord, tell us, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? Now, Jesus and his disciples had been on a long journey together. It had been exciting, yet it had been extremely difficult work. They had seen Jesus perform miracles, feed thousands of people, walk on water, calm a storm, heal the sick, cast out demons, and raise the dead. They saw Jesus rejected, arrested, tried and condemned by the leaders of Israel, stripped, whipped, and crucified by the Romans, buried in a tomb, and resurrected from the dead on the third day. Along the way, though, the disciples misunderstood, betrayed, denied, and even deserted Jesus. But now, now after 40 days with the resurrected Jesus explaining the scriptures to them, you would think that they had finally gotten it. But the disciples, 
the disciples were badly hung up on their understanding of the kingdom of God. Despite all that Jesus had taught them, despite all that Jesus had shown them about the kingdom of God, the disciples still had this image of an earthly kingdom stuck in their heads. Several times during his ministry, Jesus tried to explain that the kingdom of God wasn't like any man-made kingdom here on earth. Once Jesus was asked by a group of Pharisees, religious leaders in Israel, when the kingdom of God was coming. And Jesus answered them, the kingdom of God is not coming with things that can be observed, nor will they say, look, here it is, or there it is. For in fact, the kingdom of God is among you. No one understood that Jesus was talking about himself. The disciples were standing there when Jesus said that, but they still thought Jesus was going to restore the kingdom to Israel, to the nation of Israel, the particular nation of Israel. They still thought that the kingdom of God was the same thing as the kingdom of Israel. And the disciples assumed that they were going to be the ones to help Jesus rule over this new kingdom of Israel. At the Last Supper, the disciples even argued about who would be the greatest in the kingdom. And Jesus told them, remember, the greatest among you must become like the youngest and the leader like one who serves. Jesus, though, assured his disciples that they would eat and drink at his table in his kingdom and they would sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Then later that night, Jesus was arrested. Jesus was put on trial by those religious leaders of Israel. He was questioned by King Herod, the king of Israel, earthly Israel. Jesus was condemned to die by Pontius Pilate, a representative of the Roman Empire, the most powerful kingdom on earth at the time. Then Jesus was nailed to the cross where he hung in agony, agony, agony bleeding and dying. The cross proves the kingdom of God is nothing like. The kingdom of God is nothing like any kingdom on this earth. And though earthly kingdoms conspired to crucify Jesus, the kingdom of God prevailed. The kingdom of God prevailed when God resurrected Jesus from the dead. With everything that Jesus did, his life, his death, his resurrection, Jesus showed that in the kingdom of God there will be no more sickness. No more suffering, no more poverty, no more hunger, no more thirst, no more war, no more sin, no more evil, no more death. So I don't fault the disciples for interrupting Jesus' ascension to heaven and asking, Lord, is this the time? Is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? When we hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, when we place our faith in the Word of God, when we give our lives to Jesus and become followers, we all want the kingdom of God. Jesus even taught us to pray, Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Is this the time? Is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? Well, it's... Now, just almost 12 o'clock on Sunday, May the 24th, in the year of our Lord, 2020. So I won't take too much of your time to look at how Jesus answered that question. Jesus told his disciples three things, just three things. One, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority. Two, you will receive power from on high when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And three, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. It's interesting that every time the world experiences a global crisis like a war or a pandemic, people start speculating about the end times, the, the second coming of Christ, Judgment Day. Jesus is the one who told his followers plainly, it is not for us to know the time. Jesus only told us over and over and over again that we should be ready because it will come like a thief in the night. End of speculation, people. Next, Jesus told his followers, you will receive power from on high when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. 
for the first followers of Jesus that happened 10 days later at Pentecost when the Holy Spirit showed up like the rush of a violent wind and, and tongues of fire coming down from heaven. For you and for me, the Holy Spirit has been preparing us to become followers of Jesus since we were in our mother's womb. The Holy Spirit has been nurturing us and caring for us as we grow. The Holy Spirit joined us to the church at our baptism. And the Holy Spirit fills our hearts at the moment we confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. For 2,000 years or more, people have been, tr been, been, been trying to define the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. They try to define how the Holy Spirit works within us and among us. They try to define how the Holy Spirit reveal, reveals God's will to us. But the truth is this, folks. We don't get to define the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit who is defining us. Let me say it again. We don't get to define the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that is at work to define us. He defines us as he refines us to become more and more like the image of God in Jesus Christ that we are meant to be. Lastly, Jesus answered, you are to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. That's exactly what happened. The disciples started preaching the gospel in Jerusalem on Pentecost, and it spread out from there. In fact, to those first disciples, the United States, Mount Airy, North Carolina, would be at the ends of the earth. But since Jesus hasn't come yet, the same way those first disciples saw him go into heaven on the clouds, that great commission they were given has been passed down in the church from generation to generation. Now that great commission has been given to us. You know, in this global pandemic, I see an opportunity. I see an opportunity for the church to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Since Christians around the world have been asked to practice social distancing, to shelter in place and to stay at home, we have had the opportunity to witness to our families and to our neighbors about Jesus and his kingdom. Mind you, the people out there are watching us, our neighbors, our families, they're watching us. They're watching how we behave during this crisis. Obeying the stay-at-home order shows that we, Christians, care about each other and our community. We don't want to be spreading the virus. And this stay-at-home order hasn't prevented us from still worshiping through live streaming. We're still meeting through Zoom and, and Facebook and emails and, and phone calls. Isn't it interesting now that we are on the world wide web and in a way we are fulfilling Jesus' commandment to go to the ends of the earth from right here in North Carolina. Amen. We're still praying, we're still studying the scriptures and collecting food and spare change to feed the hungry. Ladies of the church and, and some men too are still making face masks and, and giving them to people who need them. As the restrictions are eased, we are going to get back into the community. We're going to be able to get back out into the community. And then we're going to be able to come back together here in this sanctuary and sanctuaries all over the world. But let's not forget, let's not forget any of the lessons that we've learned while we've been set apart during this pandemic. And until that day, until that day Jesus appears in the clouds, let's wait, let's pray, let's work, and let's witness. And remember this, remember this, the battle has been fought by Jesus on the cross. The victory has already been won. And since the victory has already been won, the only option left is to surrender. <laughs> to surrender to Jesus unconditionally. Surrender and receive God's grace. 
Surrender and receive God's love, God's forgiveness, and God's mercy. Surrender and receive new life. And that is the message. That is the message, church, that we must share, not just here in North Carolina, but all over the world. Amen. Amen. Our hymn, our last hymn this Sunday on Ascension Sunday is number 318 in your hymn book. If any of you snuck those home, you can open that up right now. But if you didn't manage to do that, you can look on uh, the Facebook page and see in the bulletin uh, the words, to Christ is alive. Christ is alive. Let's sing together. So what time is it, church? Well, it's just about noontime here in North Carolina. But it's time for us as the church to begin to pray, to watch, to work, and to wait for Jesus to come back the same way that he departed from those disciples and ascended to heaven. Until that time, we've got a lot of work to do because we've got to share the good news of Christ's love his grace, his forgiveness, and his mercy. Let's do that, church. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.